So, I'm Aya Morton, and here are books. His Dream of the Skyland, which won't look like this for very much longer. It's um, coming out again this summer with Top Shelf, and I'm sure they'll reimagine it. Um, the size and the way it's done with the cover. This is the French version with a image taken from inside the text. And here is The Road Home by Mimi Morton Buckley. And these pictures were made into um, Archetype Press prints and then sold as a fundraiser for the San Francisco Zen Hospice. So. There's a couple different ways that I work. I'll show you the silk screens. Um, this is a poster that I did for Profile Theater in Portland. And um, I printed it right here on that big board. Here are some other silk screens that I done recently. The lighter gray, the yellow, the blue, and then the orange. But then it's, you get this good effect with like, you know, the orange mixing with the blue. It feels like shadow. So this is a project that I'm working on currently called The Atheist. And um, I'll just show you how I sort of put the images together. And um, it's similar in graphic novel to His Dream of the Skyland, which is this one. So this was a similar process that I used for both. And basically, I'll get the script and go through, um, go through the dialogue, go through the scenes, and then sort of um, really roughly map it out and think about how many images I want per page, how much action is going to happen, um, and if that's especially important for like the pacing of the story. Yeah. Then I'll go through and sketch out the, um, a dummy, and it's the way I do it is I just tape the pages together so that I can pull them apart and change them pretty easily. So the writer's name is Jared Kobeck. He actually, he, his other book that came out recently is called I Hate the Internet, which is a great title. <laughs> so anyway, so there's that one. Um, so this is the sketch, and then it would go to the final painting. I try and draw as much as I can before I start painting because I, I feel like the fun part is like the more that the um, drawing comes together and you start to see the final look of it, then these little details, um, you can go back through and keep like adding them in um, to the earlier pages. So, and then from there I do um, line work and I like to work with this kind of ink, the FW. And this one um, is primarily in a Payne's Gray. Payne's Gray and black mix. So for instance, this one you can see it all. So I'll do the line work, the black, and then the, um, the Payne's Gray. And so it's kind of like thinking mainly in terms of the um, light and dark. Um, and the shade, and then coming through with the color. So this character is a little bit feeling out of place in the story, and so he gets this um, sort of more turquoisey color because he doesn't quite match everybody else. So here's, these are the originals for this book, His Dream of the Skyland. So this one, you're just looking at, you can see that the yellow got pumped up quite a bit. Um, in the file. Here's this one, is this one right here. So going back to His Dream of the Skyland, this is the first book in a trilogy. 
and you know they're all really hefty. This is the second book, um, Nocturne, and it's the same writer, um, but there is a different uh, female illustrator for each one of the books, and um, this one is um, Angie Hoffmeister, and she is just super talented. Over the past couple of years, the artwork was included in um, Paul Gravitz comic arts, comics art, which is really cool. This is um, a book put out by the Tate and um, discussing modern art and comics. There it is. So this is a page from The Walled City. And artwork from this book was also in a show on a um, hundred years of women in comics in um, at the House of Illustration in London, and that was really fun to see because they had original pages from um, all of these different women's work. Research. I really love looking at books. Um, definitely get online to. Um, and try and visit as many actual sites as they possibly can. Um, here's some research from this Hong Kong based book. I was lucky to get to be in Hong Kong for three months um, while I was working on this project. And so I got to um, go to their sort of, you know, they have these photo archives and collect, you know, a lot of photography from the era that I was looking at. This was like 1920s, so, and, um, and then this stuff too, like just design-wise is really fun. The colors and this is a packaging book, I think, and then uh, Hong Kong comics. Here's Hong Kong. Yeah, here's brothels, eateries. Here's ones for Civil War stuff. This is for th from this book. Really beautiful um, photographs, and the thing that I liked a lot about this was just um, you can see how the you know all the bombing and stuff it just really destroyed the landscape too. There's just you know there's ones where they have people, yeah, like this kind of thing. That's sort of you know I'll definitely like get a lot of visual reference from books um, and from online and just from going to places and taking pictures. These ones I actually ordered some costume hat stuff, you know, so that you could, I could like put it on and see what it looks like when you turn it around and stuff. I'll just go with these. So I wanted to make some dead leaves stuff going on over here. and. This, I like the, I like it when it kind of looks flat. So, um, you know, I especially like the um, print style, like a Japanese um, woodblock prints. So when I'm moving the um, paint over, I'm trying to kind of keep it in an even layer. I took a um, architectural rendering class way back in the day and they where they just do like you know layers and layers and layers <clears throat> of almost like you know water with barely any pigment in it at all and um, and then you just get this glowing effect and I really like that So yeah, so I guess the way I'm painting is kind of like the silkscreen thing too, where I like to like just put down the shapes of um, wash or color. If when I'm you know mixing, say this orange, green, and blue, I would put a little bit of each of those into the other one so that they you know are getting that. Um, are getting the, that same, like they're darkening, like the, they're darkening with each other. That's the problem with this one too, I think, is that every time I would put the blue, was getting green really fast, so. I 
needs more. Yeah, so this isn't doing much, but then once it dries and I can come back and keep going and then you get a nice fade. Like this one, I was one layer, but there was too much pigment, so it's not very soft.